Hi everyone, so today I want to talk about uh, atomic packing factor. So this is actually a really important quantity. Um, sometimes you might, I'm going to abbreviate here, APF. Basically what it is, it's a measure of uh, how densely can we pack uh, basically spheres of atoms uh, into our kind of conventional unit cells or our primitive unit cells. Um, specifically today we're going to talk about uh, three ones that you'll kind of encounter a lot, especially if we're dealing with metallic materials. So simple cubic, BCC, body center cubic, and FCC. So basically it's just a ratio of the area of your cube versus the area that's occupied by uh, atoms in your conventional unit cell. And we'll, as, as a ratio, dimensionless, it varies from zero to one uh, in theory. But if we have atoms that are all the same size, so if the atoms all have radius r, then the maximum APF is this magic number of around 0.74. And this is just a geometric, uh, essentially, identity. So we're going to look and see, do we have any close pack cells? Uh, for these three materials that we're looking at, and how do we prove it or disprove it? And again, uh, the densely, uh, if we have a close pack structure, so we have find this value, we have a close packed structure. This will have important implications later on when we get to mechanics about, uh, again, how do dislocations move? Uh, what directions they move in, how easily they move in, and it'll kind of tell you whether your material will behave, you know, brittly or ductly, uh, depending on if we have this close pack structure. So let's get to some examples and kind of start to calculate it for ourselves. So we'll start simple, and we'll go with simple cubic, uh, simple cubic for our unit cell. Let's look at our simple cubic unit cell. Not that it's that simple, but so, atoms at the edges. So, APF is just basically going to be APF equals uh, the volume of atoms over the volume of your cell. So, it's going to be useful first to count how many number of atoms do we have. So, we know that for simple cubic unit cells, there's another cell kind of behind here and here and here. So we know each of these edge atoms contributes eight. So for simple cubics, uh, we have our simple cubic cell is not only a conventional unit cell, but it's a primitive unit cell because there's only one uh, atom in that uh, cell. So we know that we have one atom, and we're going to multiply that by the volume of the atom, which we're just going to approximate as a sphere, four thirds. Pi r cubed, and we're just going to divide that by the volume of our cell. So for simple cubed, it's just going to be a cubed, and we want a cubed in terms of r, and we know that for simple cubic, this distance is equal to 2r, the nearest neighbors are touching, so that's just going to be 8r cubed. So those cancel, those cancel. And we end up with an APF that's equal to pi divided by 6. That is not a closed fact structure. Excellent. So that one didn't work. So let's go on and let's try BCC. A little bit more close packed. More atoms. Maybe we'll have better luck on that one. So let's look at ECC. So let's draw the structure. I'm going to draw a little bit further over here so we're not running into it at all. So again, usual suspects at the edges. But now we have the central atom right in the middle there. So APF for BCC. So the number of atoms now is the eighth, eighth, eighth for all edges, and then the one right in the center. So it's actually two times four thirds pi r cubed. 
And same thing here, the volume of our cell is going to be a cubed, but they want that in terms of r. So again, hopefully you've memorized by now that for a uh, BCC, it's going to be 4r over root 3. But you could actually derive that um, by noticing that in this direction, the diagonal here, this entire diagonal distance, let me change colors, so sorry about that. So this distance across the diagonal, that's where our uh, kind of nearest neighbor distance is. So it's when this atom is essentially touching this atom. So we know that that line is, the magnitude is 4r. So if we wanted to find a, we could just do some geometry. And you could figure out from there that a is equal to 4 over 4 r over root 3. Hopefully that's a little bit uh, somewhat straightforward there. So you can see that this is going to be So this is a as well, so this is that diagonal is root 2a, and then you can solve. This is a as well. Nice. So we know that this is going to be a cubed. And once you do the math here, you'll find that it is 2 times. Oh, sorry, it is going to be 0 0.68. So again, not our magic number that we're looking for, 0 0.74. So BCC is not close packed either. So we've got one left. Let's see if we're lucky this time. So remember, we're still searching for that 0 0.74. So let's look for FCC. And Draw it over here. And the unique thing about this, we've got our edges as usual, and now we have an atom on each face. So six faces in a cube. So each of these will contribute uh, a half because they're only going to be shared with that next unit cell that crosses over that line. So APF for FCC, we have a total of four atoms times, because remember we have six faces, each of those is a half, so three plus our edge, so four thirds pi r cubed, per our usual a cubed. Here, what's unique about FCC is that now this distance here, that is four r. We know that this is a a, so we know that two a squared equals uh, 16r squared. So we could write that a equals to root 2 r. So with that, plug it in here. And we find that we finally hit our magic number. So FCC is a closed pack structure, as is hexagonal closed packed as well. And you know the difference between FCC, HCP. We can get those structures depending on the packing, ABC, ABC, versus AB, 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 as we discussed in class. So FCC is a close back structure. Uh, this is going to have really important implications on kind of ductility and brittleness when you're comparing uh, basically FCC versus BCC structures. Um, so this is an important calculation. It's not just kind of geometry. It is going to affect our materials properties. So that's always kind of what we're shooting for as material scientists. Remember back to that, again, materials tetrahedron. We want to connect kind of structure to properties, performance, and how do we process things differently in order to achieve that performance. So uh, next time we'll look at uh, planar densities. And yep, so I'll see you all next time.